my name is Pamela Johnson. I am the advisor of the Walt Whitman Step Team, as well as the advisor of the African American Heritage Club. We want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and sitting back with your families and watching our Black History Month celebration. We have an amazing lineup and we want to especially thank everyone for taking the time out of their schedules to celebrate with us and giving you these amazing um, performances via our Google Zoom. So I hope you really enjoy. Take care. My name is Ariana Levin, and I'm going to be reading my short story, Act Like a Girl. You're emotional. You're weak. You're frail and non-athletic. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You're too tall. You're way too short. Don't be so clingy. Stop being so jealous. Act like a girl. Don't dress so provocatively. You'll never be good enough. I wish I was with her instead of you. Don't wear so much makeup. Maybe a little makeup will do you some good. You are so conservative. Now, imagine if the roles were reversed. Thank you. Hi, my name is Matthew Rosado, representing Maplewood Intermediate School. I am going to play It Don't Mean a Thing by Duke Ellington.
start chopping and start running. With no trains and no tracks. Through swamps, past slave catchers, across rivers, under the cover of night. Freedom. 
Nina Simone. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is waiting. For to carry you to freedom. If you follow the drinking gourd. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Frederick Douglass. Booker T. Washington. Shirley Chisholm. Whitney M. Young, Jr. Althea Gibson.
When a girl looks into the mirror, she sees a girl who's in perfect dress to meet her. She sees a girl who shoots into a void of darkness, not letting her go. Her friends and her family try to help her, but it never works. She's been laughed at and judged and scarred like no other. This left her broken and beaten more than any other. Time and time again, Emma's came to an end. But something stopped her. A voice inside her head tells her that this isn't the way. She thinks she might comfort, but no, it's true. A light, a bright light inside the darkness inside her. Helps her realize that she is who she is meant to be. Her living is far, but it's proud of it. She thinks she's perfect, but they can judge me all they want. But I don't care, I'm the best to me anywhere. That tiny light inside the darkness is now as bright as the sun. I am Jack Tripley, and this is my poem. In quality. Have you been seeing what has been happening in our world? It's ridiculous that people judge other people by the color of their skin. And it's even more ridiculous that it's been happening for a very long time now. If you're not understanding, then compare it to this. There was a chameleon walking around with light green colored skin, blending in with the forest. Then goes to another spot where it's climbed a tree and now it's light brown. Is it different colors? Yes. But is it a different chameleon? No. This is how we should think as people and respect one another. Does that guy have different color skin? Yes. But is it a different kind of person? No. Same thing with a chameleon. We are all people no matter we're black, white, or Hispanic. It does not matter. We are all human beings. Now some people might not agree, and if they don't, that's fine. But that is not right at all. So treat people how you want to be treated, and any quality has to go. Remember, we are all people no matter the color of our skin. Hello, my name is Abigail Kalu, and this is my poem, Someday. Someday, we will all be able to be together in one room. Someday, we will all be able to make special moments together. Someday, the conflict between us will disappear over time. Someday, the color of our skin won't matter. It will only bring us together. Must we not worry of the terrible things, because we will have each other. Someday, we will be able to have peace between each and every one of us. When that day arrives, let us be ready. We don't know if it is soon, or many years from now. Because now, we do have conflict. We are chanting in the streets for equal rights. And we are being exposed to violence and horrible things. But we can change. We can change together. Because together is the way to make it better. We can stop the riots, the violence, and the sadness in this world. We can be amazing with the power that we hold. Instead of sadness, we can spread love and joy. Instead of violence, think of peace. Instead of giving up on your hopes and dreams in this world, think of achieving them. Thinking will lead to action, so we all need a better mindset. A mindset that will change the way we act, speak, and move. Shall those thoughts have an effect on this world? The planet on which we live on, the only one we can live on. We can do this together. We're all in this together. We can stop the battles and fights to bring peace, hope, and joy to this very world. Lots and lots of things are going on in this planet. So let's act for ourselves and one another, so we can create a better world, a better town, a better tomorrow. My name is Ariana Levin, and I will be reading my poem, Lies from Within. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Or so we've been told. That liberty and justice for all gets me every time. Justice for who? For you? For some? I know it's not for me people who look like me. The lies being told only benefit some. They don't benefit the many. They don't benefit my people. Do they benefit yours? Thank you.
Hi, I'm Valentine, and I'll be reading an excerpt from Amanda Gorman's poem, The Hill We Climb. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left with, and every breath from my bronze-pounded chest we will raise this rounded road into a wondrous one. You will rise from the gold-limbed hills of the west, you will rise from the wind-swept northeast, where our forefathers first realized revolution. You will rise from the lake-rimmed cities of the Midwestern states, we will rise from the sun-baked south, we will rebuild, reconcile, and recover. And every known nook of our nation, every corner called our country, our people, diverse and beautiful, will emerge, battered and beautiful. Hello, my name is Blake Downey from Miss Chapman's English class, and I'll be reading an excerpt from Amanda Gorman's The Hill We Climb. We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together, victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Hi, I'm Jackson from Miss Chapman's class, and I'll be reading an excerpt from Amanda Gorman's poem, The Hill We Climb. We, the successors of a country and a time, were a skinny black girl, descended from slaves and raised by a single mother, can dream of becoming president, only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that does not mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge a union of purpose and to to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. Hi, I'm Judy Riley from Mrs. Chapman's class, and I will be reading an excerpt from Amanda Gorman's poem, The Hill We Climb. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace, and the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine. But that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge a union of purpose to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. So we lift our gazes not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. Hi, my name is Angela Hall and I will be reading an excerpt from the poem The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman. In this faith we trust, for while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption we feared at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour. But within it, we found the power to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be. A country that is bruised, but whole, benevolent, but bold, fierce and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation. Thank you. Hi, I'm Harpreet and I will be reading an excerpt from Amanda Gorman's poem, The Hill We Climb. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always just ice. And yet the dawn is ours. Before we knew it, somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished.
Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Lala Anthony, here to talk about and celebrate Afro-Latinidad. In our food, music, politics, and literature, Afro-Latinos have played a huge role in shaping Latin America and U.S. culture. But these contributions are frequently overlooked, and the size and influence of our community doesn't get the recognition they deserve. Why are there so many misconceptions about Black Latino identity? To find some answers, we need to look at our histories of colonization. Many in the U.S. would be surprised to know that roughly 95% of Africans who were enslaved and survived the Middle Passage were brought to Latin America and the Caribbean. That's right. Today, the Black population in Latin America is actually way bigger than in the U.S., but racial identities develop in different ways in these two regions, which influence how Afro-Latinidad is perceived. Being proud of my African roots is uh, something that I, that I don't take lightly and I embrace because it's part of who I am. Nosotros queremos un mundo que decimos que tenemos un Latino unidos, pero con el mismo tiempo la, tenemos que terminar la discriminación entre nosotros los Latinos. The idea that you can be black and Latino is often confusing to a population trained to conflate race, nationality, and ethnicity. People think Latino equals tan skin and black equals African-American only. And because of anti-blackness, both U.S. and Latin American societies uphold this perception. But in the real world, black Latinos and African heritage we carry are essential to Latin American culture and identity. It's in our textured hair, or the African drums used in cumbia, merengue, and salsa rhythms, to the global phenomenon of reggaeton, in dances like palos, bomba, or samba. Champeta, a dance performed by Shakira in the 2020 Super Bowl. Champeta is more than just a dance and a musical genre. It originates from the Atlantic and Caribbean coast of Colombia with influences from Euro-African and African backgrounds. The rhythms and influences arrived with the sailors from West Africa in the 1960s and 70s. Punta is a dance from Honduras that was created by the Garifuna. They are descendants of an Afro-Indigenous population from the Caribbean island of San Vicente, who were exiled to the Honduran coast in the 18th century. Punta is a social dance of joy and festivity, as well as an emblem of cultural survival. Colombiana is a blend between European, African, and indigenous cultures. Originally, it was an African courtship dance. The African influence is in the rhythm of the drums. Cumbia originates from the days of slavery in the late 17th century and is derived from the African word cumbe, which means dance. It is certain that Cumbia's birthplace comes near the settlements of African descendants brought as slaves to Colombia. <music>
cumbia is a dance style performed in El Salvador. The music is a basic beat evolved from Guinean cumbe, which is an African-rooted dance form. The dance of cumbia evolved against rhythms surrounding couples. African percussion and rhythms, Spanish structure, and American Indian melodies and melancholy all combine to create cumbia. La Rebellion by Joe Arroyo allows people to remember the African roots in the country and in South America. It stands as a reminder of how the culture has evolved. The song is a representation of a perseverant slave who would take a lot as a slave, but he would never stand by and let his wife get hit by a Spanish slaveholder. This is why Colombian salsa is so important. Quiero contarle, mi mano, un pedacito de la historia negra, de la historia nuestra, caballero, y dice así. En los años 1600, cuando el tirano mandó las calles de Cartagena, aquella historia vivió. traditional Puerto Rican dance. It is also known as the dance of the slaves because it was usually performed on the sugar plantations placed along the coast, which is the reason why the dance is spread out along the sea. <laughs> Thank you. 
ser bonita. Dark skin is beautiful and it has melanin in it and it doesn't age. We hate ourselves so much that we really don't understand how beautiful we are. Que yo por mi color o por lo que tú crees, tú no me vas a parar, que yo voy a triunfar. En lo que yo voy a hacer, yo voy a triunfar. Embrace the beauty that is you because most people are trying to look like you. They're going to get their hair curled, they're going to get tans. Si había una fórmula, yo creo que ya lo habíamos arreglado, no hay ninguna fórmula. Tú como individuo tienes que enseñar a tu gente de ser orgulloso de ser lo que eres. Somos negros y debemos ser orgullosos de nuestra raza. And it's okay to be brown and dark, and it's okay to have beautiful, big lips and features like this. It is okay. It is more than okay, actually, because the world changes and moves in different rhythms. And right now, people... ...of black Latinos across Latin America and in the U.S. keeps growing. We celebrate our natural hair. We affirm our black identity in politics and music and literature. So if we want a more inclusive future, let's start by learning our shared history and honoring Af Gumbo dancing comes from South Africa workers who worked in the gold mines during the migrant labor system and oppressive apartheid pass laws. The flooding became a big problem because many workers were getting ill. The bosses decided to take the cheaper route in dealing with the problem, so instead of draining the water, they bought the workers rubber gumboots to prevent skin breakdown. The workers began to express themselves by making rhythms and beats with their bodies, gumboots, and chains. They made noses by slapping their bodies. The Today, gumbu is popular and has morphed into a different form of dance that is modern called stepping. Stepping was created by African American college students. Stepping involves similar rhythms and instruments as gumbu dancing. Stepping involves using the body as the main instrument by stopping the feet, clapping the hands, and slapping different parts of the body to make rhythms.
Good evening, everyone. On behalf of South Huntington School District, I'd like to thank you so much for watching our virtual presentation of our Black History Celebration. It is important that our students understand the importance of this month, as well as why it is so important that we identify the wonderful things that all cultures do within our community and our nation. I would also like to take the time to thank all the schools and the students within those schools that participated in this event. Without these students and these schools, something like this could have never been accomplished. So thank you so much for watching and please enjoy the rest of your evening.